Welcome, my name is Avery and in this tutorial I'll be sharing with you my skin tone workflow. This is a powerful technique that not only gives you full control over your skin tones, but it works with virtually any shot you throw at it. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, how do we think about skin tones as a colorist? I like to break it into three components, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And each of these components plays an important role in the skin tones look. The midtones are where we add our base orange color. And this is actually going to be the same orange hue regardless of your actor's ethnicity or the rest of the color grade. For the shadows, we're going to add a little bit of a red color and this will give the appearance of blood flow in the skin. This is a great way to control how lifelike or how dull your skin tones look depending on how much of this red color you add. It's important to note here that the shadows and midtones are going to remain pretty much the same color regardless of what you're doing with the color grade. And that's where the highlights come in. The highlights of the skin should take on the ambient light color in the scene. So in this example, I'm working with a teal orange color grade and I have lots of blue ambient light in this shot. So I'm gonna add blue into my highlights and you can see right away how it makes the skin look like it's part of that actual shot. But at the same time, it keeps our midtones and our shadows looking very lifelike and natural. What's so powerful about this technique is that all we have to do is change the color of our highlights to fit whatever color grade we're using for that specific shot. So let me show you how to set this all up inside DaVinci Resolve. Here's our shot and we need to color correct this footage before we start working with our skin tones. I'll take my saturation down to zero and I'll balance my luminance first. So I'll use the curves here, set my black point on the scopes and get a little bit of contrast going in this image. I'll bring my saturation back up to 50 and then go to the RGB mixer page and turn up the red, green and blue output. And that just saturates our image nicely. So now I'll add a second node and take care of some of the color cast issues. It seems like we have some red in the shadows. So I'll go to the primary bars Turn the luminance mix down to zero, and I'll start to bring some red out of the lift. Okay, that looks about right. I can also bring some green out of the midtones there. Great, so that looks good. There's before and there's after. Now we're ready to start working with the skin. So I'll add a new node, and we're gonna go ahead and qualify our skin tones. I'll grab the eyedropper tool and select our skin. You can hit Shift H to show your selection. Just gonna select those mid-tone colors right there and then grab the feather tool and drag across the skin to blend our selection. And chances are you'll probably have to refine this a little bit by hand. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Perfect, so that's looking nice. And I wanna point out that it's okay if you select other things in the scene because chances are they will benefit from this skin tone process. So let's start working on our skin tones. I'm gonna come over here to the log wheels. And as you can tell, we have a shadow, midtone, and highlight wheel, which correspond perfectly to the technique that we'll be using to control our skin tones. I'm also gonna switch over from the parade to the vector scope. And one thing I wanna point out is that if you click this button right here, you wanna make sure that the show skin tone indicator is checked. That will give you this line and that's what we're going to be aligning our midtones to to make sure that our skin is the correct color. So I'll grab a power window, circular power window in this case, and I'll just go ahead and kind of select my skin like that. And now if we look on the vector scope, we can see where our skin is. And in this case, it's right directly on that line. Now, if it's not on the line, you can use the offset wheel to just make some subtle adjustments and get your skin either right on this line or just touching the right side of the line. So maybe I'll make a very subtle correction there. Now what I can do is take our midtones and I can push that orange color into the mids. Okay, and I'm keeping a close eye on the vector scope to make sure I'm pushing the right color. Right about there looks good. And at this point, I can shut off the power window now, if you look underneath the color wheels here, we have a low range and a high range parameter right here. And I'll show you how that works visually right now. So first thing I'm gonna do is set my low range. And I'm gonna do this by pulling it all the way down to zero. And essentially what this does is it allows our mid-tone color to extend all the way down into our shadows. So you can see our shadows are really taking on that orange color. So I'll bring my low range back up slowly to where we're basically just confining this orange color to our midtones. 
and right around there looks about right, so 0.244. And then I can do the same process with the highlights. I'll bring the high range up to one or 100%, and you can see that orange color is now coming into the highlights. So I'll begin to bring this down, again, trying to get our midtone range correct. Perfect. Now we can begin adding life into the skin by pushing some red into the shadows. And I'll say right away that a little bit goes a long way with this. So I'll push some red in there. That looks nice. And if you want to, you can even take the luminance down just ever so slightly. Okay, again, it takes very, very little here. You can even go and fine tune your low range at this point to kind of get the balance between the red and orange tones correct. So right around there looks correct to me. The next thing we can do is balance out our highlights. Our highlights look pretty close in this case, but I might want to add just a little bit of blue to them. So I'll go ahead and push this towards kind of a blue cyan color. And it's very subtle, but I think that's all we need. So let's go ahead and add another node here. And uh, I'm going to begin doing my color grade right now. So I first like to work with the luminance, just like when I color correct. So I'll take my saturation down to zero, and I'll just go ahead and kind of maybe darken this down a little bit, give a slight boost to my highlights. And there we go, that looks pretty nice. Now we'll begin to bring some color back into the shot. And that looks good right around there. And for this, I'll do just a standard teal orange grade. So let's go and add a new node, and then I'm gonna start to add that teal color. Uh, and I like to do this using the curves. So I'll bring the red down, just like that. Then in the blue curve, I will add just a little bit of blue into the shadows. There we go, that looks nice. And I'm gonna bring the blue out of the midtones and highlights. Okay, so we just have a little bit of uh, blue in the shadows, but nowhere else. Then I'll go to my green curve and add a little bit of green into the highlights. There we go, and then I'm gonna take the green out of the shadows. So there we go. Now our teal color looks really nice, but one problem you can see right away is that it's completely washing out our skin tones. So how do we bring our skin back? Well, actually, it's really easy. What I can do is hit Alt-L, which will add a layer node. So essentially, this node right here is being layered on top of our teal node. So all I need to do is select my skin here and my original skin tones will be layered on top of my graded image. So we can come over here to where we first qualified the skin and we can connect to these little triangular tabs. And this will essentially pass the qualification from one node to the next. Now you can see by default, the node is coming in inverted. So if I go to the key tab and click the invert button right here, now we're back to our original selection. So if I come back to the main view, now you can see that our original skin tones are being layered on top of our teal look. Now all we have to do are two quick steps to blend our skin in with this grade. The first thing I'll do is take my gain all the way down to zero, and then I'll slowly bring it up to where the midtone and shadow colors balance nicely with this grade. So I'll bring this up just a little bit. Right around there looks pretty nice, right around 0.6. In this case, we're working with a lot of blue ambient light. So I'm gonna use the gain wheel right here to add some blue color into our highlights and help blend our skin. So I'll go ahead and add a little bit of that bluish cyan color to the highlights. That's looking nice. And as you can see, it's washing out our skin tones just a little bit. So I can undo that correction in the gamma by pushing the opposite color. So push a little bit of orange there. And there we go, now we're getting those nice blue highlights that help blend our skin with the rest of the shot, but our midtones and shadows are still that really nice, natural, rich skin color. Finally, let me show you the real power of this technique. Let's say your director comes in and says, you know what, I've seen the teal grade a bunch, let's do something different. So you go ahead, you take your teal grade and delete it, and I'll go ahead and reset my skin node real quick too. So I'll take my gain down to zero, and then I'll reset my gamma and my gain wheels. And let's say your director says, you know what, I wanna create a very green cast image with some warm golden highlights. So we can come over here to this node where we originally created the teal look, 
and we can start to create this new grade. So I'll add in kind of a yellow green color into the gamma in the midtones. Add maybe just a little bit of cyan into the shadows, just ever so slightly. And then I'll add a nice, rich, warm, kind of golden yellow color into the gain. Okay, so obviously as you can see, it's a very different look. But like before, our skin tones are kind of being washed out by the grade. Not as bad as the last example, but we still want to bring back our skin. So I'll go ahead and just like before, I'll select my skin node and start slowly bringing up the gain. So I'll go ahead and zoom in a little more here. Slowly bring up the gain to where the mid-tones and the shadows right here in the cheek look correct. So right around there. Finally, all we have to do is adjust the highlights to match the ambient color of this grate. So I'm gonna take our gain wheel and start to push a little bit of that same golden yellow color into the highs. There we go, that's looking really nice. And if I want to, I can again sort of cancel that correction out in the gamma. So in this case, I'll push this a little bit towards kind of a cyan blue. And there we go. Not only does this method give you full control over your skin tones, but it's also extremely versatile, which is why I use it all the time. Now, before I sign off, I wanna give a big thank you to everyone who's helped us break the 1,000 subscriber milestone. At the beginning of December, we were a little over 800 subscribers, and now already, as of January 1st, we've broken 1,200. That's a 50% growth in just one month. And I can't say enough how rewarding it is to not only see people subscribing, but to read your comments, your feedback, to see people sharing these videos, and to watch a small community start to form around this channel. And I wanna thank everyone for being a crucial part of helping this channel grow. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Avery Peck. Happy New Year to everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.